Good evening, church. It's good to see everyone this evening. We're going to get started. We can find our seats or, yeah, we can stand up. It'd be better if you can. Let's go ahead to go to the Lord in prayer today. Let's put this time in His hands. Lord, we're here for you, God. Like this song says, God, we just thank you for taking us out of Egypt, God. We thank you for rescuing us from the enemy, God. We just thank you today, God, because you're right here, right now, God. I just pray that we would be able to touch your garments today, God. We want to have encounters with you, God. We want to have an encounter with your presence this evening. revelation of who you are. We've got a fresh revelation of what you want for our lives. Give us ears to hear what you're saying to us today. As we worship, I pray you'll give us a new song God, to sing to you. Just give us a new song to you.
God who fights. Cause you're the God who fights for me. Lord of every victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll read Psalms 30, 5, 11, and 12. It says, for his anger is but for a moment, and his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes with the morning. You have turned for me my mourning into dancing, and you have loosened my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness, that my glory may sing your praise and not be silent. O oh Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for bringing us out of our Egypt, Father. Thank you for turning our mourning into joy, Father God. Lord, we just remember your faithfulness, Lord. We remember your faithfulness, Lord, in whatever season we're in right now, Father God, whether it's a joyful season or a season of affliction, we remember your promises. We remember your goodness, Lord. We thank you, Father, that you set our feet in a broad place because you've delighted in us, Lord. We hold on to your promises, Lord goodness, Jesus. We thank you, Father God, that you are the one who sees us and knows us, Lord, and are acquainted with us, Jesus. Come meet with us here, Lord. Set our feet in a broad place. Bring us joy again, Father God, remembering your goodness, remembering your kindness. We just rest in you today. Thank you, Jesus. As, as she was beginning to share that scripture, the Lord just put something into my mind. And it's not just for us. It's for me because it's, it's for all of us because we are in a, we have been called into a kingdom. We have been called into a war, like it or not. And we have called into a battle. Amen. And what I have, then the Lord just spoke this scripture to me is like no battle is ever won with our eyes on ourselves. There is no victory with our eyes consistently on us. And I know at times with there's a place for self-evaluation. We need to know where we're at with the Lord. When we know we need to know when we're not right with the Lord. We need to know that we need to get right with the Lord. But I want to tell you what, you cannot spend your life, we cannot spend our lives with our eyes on ourselves. Because there will never, never, ever be victory in that place. It's we have to get our eyes on the author and the finisher of our faith and put our hope and trust in him. And he will change our certain present circumstance. He is the one that's going to change it. If we look our, at our hope to him, and if we place our hope and our trust in him, he will fulfill. He, the scripture says that faithful is he who has begun a good work in us. Amen. He didn't say we didn't say we will complete it. He said he will complete it. Amen. As we look to him. Amen. the cr- 
crimson stain upon your robe with every nail with every pound of blood by every stripe and every bruise upon your back I can hear you crying out you say Father, I decide the day would be that they may be with me to see for me. You took all, took all my shame and my iniquity. For the sake of freedom, you set me free.
Are you grateful for God's faithfulness? That's what we're singing about. That's what we're proclaiming, that he's true, and he always will be true, and he will be true to you personally. That's his nature, his promise to you. That's the promise of Jesus. And really this worship song is also making reference to the ver- one of the very, very last events that we have recorded in the Bible. And it's called the Marriage Supper of the Lamb. And it's a future event. It goes all the way at the end of the Bible. Of course, we know that God... He's outside of time. He's eternal. It's just, it's just on the menu for him. We call it the end of time, and God's like, what time? <laughs> You're going to be with me forever. But we think in the reference of time, so we get it. And, it, and it's recorded all the way at the end of Scripture in the book of Revelation in the 19th chapter. And it's this marvelous wedding event, a party, really, a party, a Jesus party, like the top. (laughs) There's no world event that could compare. I mean, you know, you can think of the funnest time you've ever had or the greatest amusement or the greatest food or the greatest house you've ever been to. And ain't none of that got nothing on the marriage supper. This is going to be a feast. It's going to be a party. It's going to be, it's going to be out of sight. Out of sight. And it's mentioning that in this song because it's a testimony that he's going to be faithful forever and ever and ever. Maybe you need to proclaim that tonight. Maybe you're in a situation (laughs) that you're like, ah, and it's shaking you. Just declare that. Just declare that from the bottom of your heart because when you declare the truth, you speak it and you, and you can, your faith can arise. You are faithful, Lord. And we even see that. We're worshiping that and proclaiming that you're faithful you'll be faithful to the end you'll be faithful to this wedding supper party and beyond that you you can't ever not be faithful you are the definition of faithfulness and oh we pray and we align ourselves with you tonight and we align our heart we align our own hearts and we say get in line heart get in line my soul Get in line with Jesus. And I do, and, and we, we just praise you for your faithfulness and that you are in control. You are in control. And, and for that, we can rejoice. We can rejoice. We can rejoice and thank you that you will always have the victory. You will always have the victory. You are faithful. And you have the victory in each and every one of us. And we surrender to you. And we submit to you. And we declare that the faithfulness of the Lord is, it covers the earth. Listen, like the waters cover the earth. We declare, Lord, that you are true. And you are faithful. And we trust in you. We trust in you, and, and, and we depend on you. We depend on you, and we're, we're thankful for that tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing that to our attention again tonight. The faithfulness of God, that can, that's an unchangeable, that God will always be faithful. And thank you, Lord, for bringing that to our attention tonight. Thank you, Lord. Have your way tonight, we pray. Amen. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, worship team. You may be seated. Thank you all for worshiping with us here at Church of Living Hope. 
on this fine Wednesday evening. We are going to dismiss to our Bible studies. Um, we have an English Bible study, we have a Spanish Bible study, we have a Bible study for youth, 18 and under. We also have a senior adult group meeting that are doing a Bible study specifically on prayer. And they are meeting next door. So we're going to dismiss those at this time. Uh, the youth can go with uh, Pastors Ian and Grace next door. If you're interested in that prayer Bible study, I see Randall right back there. You can follow him for that. Spanish will meet next door as well in the same building as the youth. And if you want to have English Bible study with small groups, we study the word and then we break into small groups. You can stay right here. That's what we're going to do in this in this room tonight. And we're going to study Genesis chapter 39. Genesis chapter 39. Going through verse by verse. And it has been so rich. So rich. Such a blessing. And of course, we've, we've been going verse by verse. And so we all familiar with where we're at. We're in this... Uh, story, really the beginning of the story of Joseph. Of course, a couple of chapters ago is when he was attacked by his brothers, betrayed. Um, it says he was thrown into a pit. The preacher in training. <laughs> The minister in training, the pit, We've, some of, all of us in some way can identify with that. <laughs> At some point in our life where God just had to sit us down. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. The tumbling, isn't it? And so he was betrayed by his brothers, right? And they sold into slavery, and he was sold, and they took him away. And that's kind of where we last saw Joseph, just being hauled off. And then we saw the story of his brother, really just showed where his brothers were at. It kind of gave us a glimpse into that, in the story of Judah. Yeah, it was quite a contrast. And so it, it turns the page to chapter 39, and we we're seeing now um, what's happening with Joseph and um, his story. So, and we'll we'll start going verse by verse. Genesis thirty-nine, verse one it says, "Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought bought him." from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. So we see this is the man who purchased him, like purchasing a slave. And of course, we see him taken to Egypt. And I think it's worth noting, here we are studying God's word, it's worth noting that this character of Pharaoh, it's a title. It's like president or emperor, you know, um, potentate, you know, it's a title. And actually, there are many different pharaohs that we see in the scriptures. So it's worth noting that this is definitely not the pharaoh that will be later um, encountered, you know, in in Egypt to by Moses and Aaron and the plagues different would be a totally different man right and so it's a title and so this other man here specifically that's purchasing him it's not even pharaoh right it's but he's some sort of 
some sort of high rank, right? Here it lists captain of the guard. We, we just know that must mean he was some sort of man uh, of influence and importance. And I've read in biblical archaeological stuff, I've read that in Egypt it was you were either super rich or super poor. And and I I mean I have no no problems with believing that. <laughs> we weren't there, you know. <laughs> But they have a lot of uh, evidence about these types of things. Yeah, it sounds like socialism. It really does. I'm not trying to be political. I'm just, I'm just being factual. <laughs> and so this man would have been one of the extreme wealthy men. Um, so it's probably a, it's probably a palace. Probably was multi-story. It's interesting to note, historically, in some of these countries, you know, we think of wealth today, and, and they had their own wealth. <laughs> that in some ways, in some, make the wealth today seem normal. I'm talking about gold everything. I'm talking about stairs that are carved out of ivory. You know what I'm saying? They they had they have found evidence in many of these metropolitan areas of ancient time gardens that make the gardens of today look ridiculous. Hanging gardens, gardens that were 10 stories tall. It was probably amazing. <laughs> and, of course, we know this is when the pyramids would have been either already existed or were being built. Some people really believe that the Hebrews would have been the labor, perhaps. There's not a lot of proof of that, but it just makes sense that Egypt would eventually have this slave force, right? And you know that they still don't understand completely how those things were put together. It's a, it's a mystery. <laughs> but anyway, I just hope that'll help us kind of tap into the scene um, that where Joseph was brought was probably, was probably amazing. Um, they probably had palaces that extended to the Nile River. Um, it was probably quite, quite exquisite. And so, and doesn't that just testify to God's hand on his life? I mean, and we all know this from the story. This isn't getting off the page at all. He brought, we see Joseph betrayed, and he was and God takes him straight to the captain's house. God's hand on him. And then we see this, this prosperity. Verse 2, it says, The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house and all that he had he put under his authority. And so it was from that time that he made him overseer of his house and all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Thus, he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. And he did not know what he had except for the bread which he ate. I'm talking about the blessing of God. Tell you what, 
And this story really testifies that when you're in Christ, the blessing of God can follow you all the way to, to the pit. <laughs> all the way, and we'll get to the next chapter, all the way into the prison. And it was Joseph's relationship with God. And that's one of the key parts of the story that should really speak to us. Um, his devotion to God despite everything, despite anything else. It says, now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. So he's growing up, right? He's becoming a man. Verse 7, and it came to pass after these things that the master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph and she said, lie with me. Well, this slithery snake... You know, she was slithering. And and it gives that and it gives that description of her eyes, right? It does. And and I think we can all see that picture, right? She's using those eyes to try to seduce him. And He's not he's not taking the bait. Right? Thank you, Jesus. What a testimony. What a testimony. And what a help to us today. We don't have to fall for this jazz. Right? Men, right? We don't have to fall for this. This connivery. Come on, men, we do not have to fall for this jazz. And this still goes on today. Yes, and women either. You don't have to fall for those long and puppy dog eyes. Mr. Handsome, get your handsome back. Let me see the Bible in your hand. Let me see, let me see the Holy Ghost in your heart. Now that's a man. Now, I don't want to see no longing eyes. Everybody's got a pair of eyes. They got a pair of armpits too. <laughs> yeah. Need some Dio. Get Joe. Off me. But he refused. Now listen to this. It's so key what he says here. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Look, my master does not know what is with me in the house, and he has committed all that he has to my hand. There is no one greater in this house than I, nor has he kept back anything from me but you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against who? God. God. Is so key. Is so key. And it's so key that we realize our sin is against really the Lord. And I believe that should help us. It can help us immensely. And he wasn't saying, I'll sin against you. or He really wasn't even saying, I'll sin against my boss. He was saying that, and he didn't want to sin against his boss. But he put it in the total right place and and this testifies to this guy he's sold into slavery he's beat up he got thrown in the pit and he's super sold out to god he's super sold out to god and you know what god prospered him i believe that's one of the key parts his obedience and his dedication and obedience you know he's sold out he's so sold out and he sees it in the right perspective. He sees it that it's a sin against God. It's not just a bad thing I shouldn't do, you know. He said, no, I'm not going to sleep with you because this is that would be against God. And it that didn't make her mad. And, you, and that didn't make her happy. And you know what? That's life. 
many times when we stand up for God, there'll be people around us that don't understand that. There'll be people around us that really, that could even make them upset. Why are you doing this God stuff? Why are you following God? And it makes them upset. But we keep going anyway. Amen? We keep going anyway because our blessing doesn't come from those other people. <laughs> our blessing comes from the Lord and our relationship is with Him. And you know what? Sometimes there will be people in our life that may be upset forever, right? Proverbially, anyway. But you know what? I think a lot of people come around <laughs> and, and at the least show respect. Um, when they see that we have a true relationship with God. <clears throat> of course, we know how the story goes. She doesn't get a chance to come around. She she gets crazy. She gets cray-cray. So it was, as she spoke to Joseph day by day, that he did not heed her to lie with her or to be with her. She was real persistent and, and awful, right? But it happened about this time when Joseph went into the house to do his work, and none of the men of the house w w were inside. See, she's waiting for that that time, right? Creeping, yeah, like a yeah, like a predator, right? Like a predator, waiting for that things to line up. Yeah, Jezebel. So there's this ter there's this key moment where th it's a bad. It's a trap, right? It's a trap. Nobody else was inside. Verse 12, that she caught him by his garment and saying, lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. That dude took off, which is the right thing to do. He, it turned out poorly but I'll tell you what he did the scriptural thing yeah next time grab the jacket <laughs> yeah, funny stuff yes he does he's got a problem with his coat <laughs> good point Stephanie yep so he took off she grabs it right so it was when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled outside that she called to the men of her house and spoke to them saying, See, he has brought into us a Hebrew to mock us. Now she's getting racial. He came in to me to lie with me and I cried out with a loud voice. And it happened when he heard that I lifted my voice and cried out that he left his garment with me and fled and went inside. And I'll tell you what, don't be surprised when people lie on you. It's, it's the devil. He, and he is what? The father of lies. So the devil will lie on you. Okay. So she kept his garment until his master came home. Then she spoke to him with words like these, saying, The Hebrew servant whom you brought to us came in to mock me. So it happened, as I lifted my voice and cried out, that he left his garment with me and fled outside. So it was, when his master heard the words which his wife spoke to him, saying, Your servant did your servant did to me after this manner that his anger was aroused. Then Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison. Mm. A place where the king's prisoners were confined. And he was there in the prison. 
But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy, and he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners who were in the prison. Here he comes right to the top again. He's following the Lord. He gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners who were in the prison. Whatever they did there, it was his doing. The keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority because the Lord was with him. And here it is again. And whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. That is that is the prosperity that comes from obeying God. It's like everything he touched went better. <laughs> everything he touched prospered all the way to this warden. Uh, different Bible commentaries I read made note of this that what he did what, what he was I'm sorry what he was accused of was grounds for death which m leads many people to believe that Potiphar didn't fully believe his wife and I, I'm inclined to believe that. And I think it could easily be true because if she was this seductive and vile, how could his, her husband not see that? Husbands, husbands know that kind of thing. Just like wives are inclined if a man is is uh yeah so thank you jesus that whether potiphar knew or whatever the lord knows everything and can give revelation to who needs it yes and discernment to who needs it and God's hand was on him. Even if Potiphar tried to kill him, God's hand was on this man. It, it's, it's a powerful story, though, and one thing that I think we'll continue to see chapter after chapter is that it, it's really, it's like the story of Job in, a, in many ways that it shows us God's prosperity, his hand on you, but it does not keep bad things from happening to you. There's like a perfect balance there in reality, in real life. <laughs> in, in real life. Yes, in real life, he had to hit the ramen noodles. Even though God's hand was on him, but he had as many ramen noodles as he needed. No, he was in the ODR. Come on, God. This is the warden's office. So he was eating the best food <laughs> in the prison house. Hallelujah. But yes, it and the Bible teaches us so clearly. God's prosperity and blessing doesn't doesn't make it to where we never have to go through bad things, it changes who we are. It changes who we are. It changes, it changes what he does through our life. We could be going through pain right now. And that doesn't mean God's hand's not on us. It means that God is working through those poor situations. Are you thankful for that? I am thankful for that. And of course, we see by the end of this uh, story is that 
a master plan, a national plan, I'm sorry, an international plan, uh, was something much bigger um, was happening through God's hand. Amen? Okay. If you've been joining us online, we're going to break into our small groups at this time. Thank you for studying God's Word. And we invite you to come back and join with us Sunday morning. Thank you and God bless.